All right, well, you may be actually saying to yourself something like, you know, Steve, momentum or rate of change is nice, but I don't want to wait as long uh, to buy or sell uh, before it crosses the zero line. I want to you know, kind of get in there a little sooner. If that's true, then the very popular RSI is for you. So RSI, or Relative Strength Index, uh, is a momentum indicator, and it's a much faster uh, than the rate of change or traditional momentum as a signal to that the impeding price change may be happening. So it's a good tool, how a lot of people use it, it's a good tool for profit taking, recognizing I've maybe my security's gone up in price and I've got some profit and now I'm watching this RSI to see when I might want to Pro, uh, sell or get, take that profit out, you know, because it's going to give me a, a little faster signal than, let's say, a momentum, the traditional momentum indicator, or ROC. Uh, it can be less reliable, though, for buy and sell signals, so you have to kind of think about that as well. It's good, but it might be a little bit less reliable in terms of, you know, deciding the actual time to actually buy or actually sell, but it can give you an indication that something's changing, something's coming, you know. So, you can use uh, other indicators maybe to determine your buy and sell signal, like I'm going to buy or sell based on this primary indicator, but then I'll use something like RSI to kind of confirm that and say, yeah, this is RSI is a little less reliable, but these are real reliable. So I'm going to use that RSI as an additional confirmation, and then I'm going to make my trading move. So that's where RSI can be really powerful or strong in that way. As I mentioned, it's part of the momentum family. And so it means it's looking at the relative speed of the price changes, or how is it accelerating, deaccelerating. And it, the difference is it's going to use averages over several days rather than a single price point. So you remember from the traditional of the ROC momentum lesson or rate of change, it's basically if I was looking at 10 days, I would go back 10 days and look at the price there for momentum in, in using that, in the system, the platforms will automatically calculate. But um, it's basically a 10 day in that example look back. And just that, it doesn't care about what happens in between, it's just that 10 day one. RSI is nice where it's gonna use the averages over that, uh, over that period to kind of give you uh, a better kind of look at as far as the signal in terms of price points. And that is what helps it to be more, uh, more sensitive, let's say, than a typical ROC and be able to be more faster acting than traditional ROC as well. So for those who love math, <laughs> You don't have to calculate this. The uh, the trading platform will automatically put you in nice little lines and charts, uh, you know, on your chart. So, uh, but if you're wondering, this is the you know the kind of the calculation behind it, uh, as far as there's a step one and a step two uh, to kind of figure out the RSI or relative strength or relative strength index is is the combined to do. Uh, the one thing you want to take away from those, as you can see from the math part of it, is RSI is what's part of is momentum, but it's also part of what's considered the oscillator sub category subfamily on it. Basically what an oscillator does is it converts the positive converts the positive numbers between zero and one hundred percent. So we remember rate of change, we had a zero line and we could be above zero or below zero. This there's no zero line. Uh, well there's a zero line, but there's nothing below the zero line. It's going to be all positive numbers. And most of those ranges and most of those things you're going to see are going to range between 30 and 70 percent. And when you're actually seeing things on a chart, you're going to see that. Uh, also the default for RSI as far as how it was developed is 14 days, 14 trading days, is the standard for RSI uh, time range. Uh, you could use other time ranges. You could use, you know, 14 periods. So it could be 14, you know, hours, you know, 14 minutes, whatever you might want to do. But the standard was around built around days, which is 14 days as a standard for an RSI. If you go longer than that, you're going to see more false signals taking you out of a maybe a possibly longer trend if you're if you're going longer. And if you go shorter, you might see more you might experience more frequent trading because it's going to give you signals to be buy trade buy sell buy sell buy sell you know more frequently. So 14 days seems to be the sweet spot when you're using an RSI, and I would tend to recommend just staying with that. It'll be a default in your trading platform. You can change it, but that would be kind of the default and what I would recommend using too. So what really RSI is telling us is it's going to really tell us about overbought and oversold conditions. That's a big thing that's going to tell us about. So if you think about an overbought condition, you know, traders will, are, you know, are thinking the current price rise, current price rise trend is at an extreme, right? It's overbought. The prices have gone up to the top. And the traders are starting to think, oh, it's starting to settle down now. Uh, there might be less people coming in to buy. It seems a little overbought. So we might be ready for a turnaround to happen at any moment where the prices are going to start falling now. So we might want to take our profits now. We might be getting towards the peak. Again, it's hard to predict the actual peak and trough of a price, but you know, the idea is you want to get as close as you can. And so when you have this overbought condition, your, your IRS line is going to cross above the 70% line. 
So that's kind of the magic number, the one you kind of keep in your head, and we'll show you in the examples here coming up. But that when it crosses above the 70% line, that's showing there's an overbought condition. And if you have, if you own the security now, it might be time to sell. Uh, you can use uh, as a primary, you can use the RSI as a primary tool to be watching for these overbought conditions, or it's also really good as a confirming indicator too, with using with other indicators. Oversold conditions would be kind of the exact opposite. You know, traders think the current price has fallen to an extreme. It's gone on way too far. And there's few sellers right now, and the price is relatively cheap, and people are not willing to you know, sell anymore. They just think it's gotten way too low. So it might be ready for a turnaround in terms of going back up. So buyers are starting to come back in, and as it starts to go back up, even more buyers will come back in. Particularly of a trend forms, so you'll start seeing a lot of buyers coming in and really drive that price up. So uh, with the RSI, a security would be oversold when the RSI crosses below the 30% line. So above the 30, 70% line overbought, below the 30% line is oversold. Again, you can use that as a primary or it's also actually very good as a confirming indicator. Uh, also note too, in terms of overbought or oversold, you know, that when trends are strong, the stronger the trend, uh, in securities can be overbought or oversold for longer periods of time. And that makes kind of sense, right? We've already got this long period of this strong trend that's well established. People are going to be a little less reluctant to get off that train, to get off that trend train, because it already looks very good. So by using RSI, we can kind of recognize, hey, the train might be coming to an end here, or might be coming to the station, time to maybe sell my security. You know, so if we own it, let's say in an overbought condition, like, oh, okay, you guys are still excited. We've been having the strong trend for a long time. I've got another indicator saying, ah, a turnaround might be coming. And I, my RSI is telling me a turnaround's coming. Might be a great time to get out. So that's how you can kind of how you can kind of use it as far as that relative strength index, looking for those overbought and oversold conditions. And that 70% and that 30% line are the key parts to that. Let's take a look at that. So if we look at this uh, sample RSI uh, chart here, and as we know, the relative strength index, if we're the lines are crossing below 30%, that means it's oversold um, and would be a buying opportunity. And if the RSI crosses above 70%, that's indicating that we're looking at an overbought situation and a sell opportunity. And in this example, and the ROC, of course, is related to the zero line. So this is not on here yet, but we'll talk about the comparison with the uh, rate of change in a moment here. But as you can see, on uh, this particular one, it never does get to the 30 line. It never does even, it gets close, it gets around 50%, which is an indecisive area. It could go either way. Uh, but if we look at this particular uh, chart, uh, it is telling us that there are periods where it's above 70. Uh, you can see in the far right where it's in the uh, upper left too, it says 83.11. That's the actual measure. So not only is it above 70, it's actually quite above 70. And this, in this particular chart, it colors it in, which is nice to be able to visualize that easily as well too. So those would be, uh, you know, traditionally it would be like a sell type opportunity when you see that. If we use the same security and now we put below the RSI, we put the ROC, uh, you can see how they follow along very similarly, uh, you know, as far as the movement of the lines uh, are very similar in pattern. Uh, the ROC, of course, is going to use that zero line. And if it crosses above the zero line on the ROC, as we recall, that's a buy signal. If it crosses below the ROC, that is a, a down uh, or an up, uptrend signal. And if it crosses below the, the zero line, that's a downtrend signal or a sell type signal. Now, if we look at these together, one thing that uh, you'll see here is uh, you notice how in the ROC, uh, how it goes above and below the zero line pretty frequently there in the middle. That's that whipsaw effect where it's going whipping above and below the line, causing a lot of frequent buy and sell signals. And the RSI above does not have that. Remember, the RSI is at 70 and 30. If you look at that same part of the chart, there's no buy and sell signals. It's really truly showing that there's a period of indecisiveness. So um, you wouldn't be as actively trading. You wouldn't be potentially taking on more either for fees or more potential for you know, short-term losses around this because it's filtering all that out uh, with the RSI. And that's why a lot of people really prefer the RSI uh, from that aspect is it does uh, tend to take out those, um, those whipsaw actions as you can see in this example here. So RSI's, a relative strength index is extremely popular. Many times it is a default, you know, when you go into a trading platform and they might automatically put things like candlesticks in your chart or they might automatically put uh, other types of indicators in your chart or above or below the chart. 
RSI is a very popular one that sometimes is a default. So that means it's very popular, very useful. A lot of traders are looking at it and a lot of people use it as uh, sometimes as a primary, but a lot of times, you know, I like to use it as a confirming, confirming something else. So uh, RSI is great. So take a look at RSI as part of being part of that whole momentum indicator family.